dude, here's where your struggle is. You're so disconnected between the authenticity of your story and the USP that you're trying to make up. It's so contrived. Uh, it's no wonder why you can't attract anybody because there's nothing about you that signals to this to this target demographic. What, what I find a lot of people try to do is they try to say what they think is the right thing. Right. You know, they're like, oh, well, where is the opportunity already, like in my own head, which may or may not be the reality. But the, the, the truth is you really don't need many clients. How many times have we repeated this? Like you need 30 clients at 200 bucks a month to make $72,000 a year. This is the online trainer show, trainer show, trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. I was thinking about, I was thinking about baseball the other day. I was thinking about baseball the other day and something that I realized about baseball was like a batting average of 300 is considered really, really good. Yeah. Three out of 10. So what I'm, what I'm saying, if you follow is that like, we probably have three out of 10 good episodes. <laughs> right. So we're, we're basically Hall of Famers. We're basically Hall of Famers. <laughs> is exactly Hall what I'm saying. Hall of Fame podcast. We're basically the Ted Williams wow. of podcasts. So went live this morning. I was I was listening to it on my. I went for a jog again. Why the hell do I do that? But I don't know, oh man. My God, it's such a waste. Of Stop time. it. I know. I know. But <laughs> I was listening to it. I was listening to it when I was when I was doing that thing this morning that I don't understand why people do. And you get nowhere fast. Like just ride a bike. You know, it's just it's, it's better. It's a gloriously inefficient mode of transportation. Um, jogging makes no sense. But it was the episode where we had the the glowing positive review, like five star review, where the person commented and said that the only knock on it was that we needed to let the women talk more or the females talk more. Right, right. And we were just we were just giving him or her crap. Because they're like calling out Ren and I for not allowing them to talk right. more and right. didn't even know their names. Didn't even know who the women were. <laughs> just, need to, they, just know they need to talk more. Yo, you uh, went off on I that I still one. appreciate the sentiment. Did I? I really appreciate the sentiment anyway. So there's that. I, I didn't, I, I haven't listened to it. Um, can, you can went I off. Think, you went off I, in a good way, but you went off. You just, you, you, you recognized an opportunity. <laughs> Put it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So, can I tell you guys my doctor story? Because I had an annual physical yesterday. Oh, uh, tell me is, about that. Is, is, um, yeah, is, is this okay? Like, I mean, it yeah. depends what happened okay, in the so, physical. I assume you had to turn your head and cough. <laughs> but as long as you did, this is going to be. There really, was a total really of four coughs. Yeah, a total of four coughs involved in this uh, in this story. Right. So, you know, I, for those out there to, that are listening, uh, you know, don't allow my boyish looks to belie my age. I'm, I'm a gentleman of a certain age. I'm closer to 47 <laughs> than I am to 46 at this point. Trying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm round, rounding that rounding that corner uh, to to my late 40s. So I, you know, as I'm sure you all can understand, I, you know, I want to be healthy. You know, I prioritize my health. Uh, that includes an, an annual visit to the doctor, at the very least, to check up. The Amber's, Amber's, Amber's all, already cautiously optimistic for what's about to happen. Here. I actually think Thank she's um, cautiously pessimistic. I think she's Probably. rounded the corner on this. Probably so. A 46, 47-year-old like, talking about his annual physical yeah, is yeah. never a good thing for a guy. It's, it's never about. good. It's never good. It's good for podcasts, though. Um, but it's like all of a sudden Amber realized what I was about to start talking about about and it just it just it washed right over her face um so in any case so there's in 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 the me medical care system here they have these things called scribes are you guys familiar with the scribe I, mean, I know what i know what a scribe is you know but scribe i assume is. it's like it's not what you're talking about i mean a right. scribe it, is like somebody who like writes stuff down on parchment, absolutely right absolutely a scribe uh so they have medical scribes and medical scribes are people who take the burden off of the doctor by just taking the notes. Oh wow! Uh, yeah. So there's somebody else in the room just sitting. Somebody in the else in the room. Somebody else in the room. Like wearing uh, a shabby uh, jacket with like a scraggly beard, <laughs> just no, taking notes. <laughs> you know, I wish uh, it was actually a, a very nice young lady. I think whose name was Mackenzie or Michaela. Uh, so something with the M MK. But, one of those you know, mix. Yeah, one of yeah, those mix. Yeah, she's in, she's in her in her seemed to be in her twenties ish. Um, 
in, getting an education, I assume. I was going to say uh, probably medical school or something, right? Like probably yeah, probably, training, probably yeah. like medical school. I don't know. She's not a doctor yet. So the scribe takes the notes so that the doctor doesn't have to take the notes. They take, they're like the, they're like the court stenographer, right? You know, I'm just sitting there and have my exam. She's with, so the doctor at the top of the, uh, the uh, exam says, hey, you know, this is our scribe, Mackenzie, McKenna, Michaela, McDonald's. I don't know. Um, As we you know, just were talking about knowing right. her name. <laughs> right. Yeah, the, I'm sorry. To our listeners out there, the female. Uh, we'll call her Michelle. Ma- Michelle. That's fine. We'll call her Michelle. Whatever. We'll call her Michelle. Um, you know, I like your blue cup. That's, that just looks like there's something delicious in that blue cup. Uh, Carol's got a lovely uh, powder blue mug, and I'm just, I love the color. Uh, so in any case, so he said, well, Mr. Jones, you know, is it okay if Michaela stays in the room through your exam? She's our sweat. Sure. You know, you know me. I'm a swell enough guy. I like people. You just, I feel like at that point, you need to just take a step back and be like, Michaela McKenzie Michelle, prepare <laughs> to be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're, I hope you're ready for the oh master's God. level oh education. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so he, you know, the doctors obviously. I remember last time we spoke, Mr. Jones. You know, you a personal trainer, certified. You know, I want to get your credentials. I may have, I may send some people your way if they, you know, didn't get in shape. So we're having this conversation about, you know, exercise and fitness and things like that. So he says, uh, okay, so. I want to take you, we've gotten your blood pressure, looks normal, everything looks good there. Let me let me get you to breathe in, breathe out. Okay, so I need you to take off your shirt, Mr. Jones. I'm like, okay, that's cool. You know, take off my shirt. I'm a trainer, no big deal. Take take my shirt off. Uh, he's like, actually, we need to get you down to the underwear. Now I'm having second thoughts here uh, because, <laughs> you know, the doctor is one thing. And I'm thinking, is the scribe an actual medical professional? Or is this just some young lady who was looking for a job during the <laughs> pandemic, you know, and here she is now. With this scantily clad forty-six-year-old male uh, who's about to go down to his boxer briefs, I'm a boxer. Is she going to be able to maintain her professionalism? Right. Am I going to be able to maintain my professionalism <laughs> as a as a as a patient? My patientism, like, is at risk here. You know, so I, so I play no big deal. I've I've done a fitness competition before. I'm used to being down to my skivvies. No, no big deal. It's basically basically a tighter pair of swim trunks. Uh, so, uh, so he says, uh, you know, stop, please stop tensing up your, your abdomen in the shower. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. I'm ticklish. You know, as he's pal- palpitating, you know, he's reaching, you know, to see what's going on with your tummy to see if there's any issues, any pain there. No, no pain at all. Very gentle man. The doctor was, Did by the way. Did he say Very, tummy? Uh, ge- yeah. Push, pushing in my tummy. Gentle he man. Say, he said tummy. Very, your doctor said he, tummy. He's, no, he didn't say tummy. He said tummy. <laughs> he said your abdomen is Stomach, what he said. Gut, yeah, crap yeah, factory. Yeah. yeah. So, and he's got very warm hands. I don't know if he had his hands in his pockets. Well, they rub them together. No, they straight up. They rub them. Is that what they do? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Miyagi, um, like I'm an injured Daniel son at the end of Karate Kid One. Uh, he's about to heal me so I can go do the crane kick. So, in any case, I'm you know some so I'm laying on the thing and and uh, and Michaela she's just scrapping away. Michaela Michelle McKenzie. She's just scribing away, uh, and he says, um, "He says, uh, uh, so let's get you stand, standing up, and I just want you to bend over and rotate so I can see your spine, elongate your spine." He said, "Okay, can you give me give me one squat? I just want to check for postural." I was, "Oh, it's a very good squat, Mr. Jones." I said, "Well, I'll take pride in my squats." Uh, he said, "So you know, uh, um, I don't see that you have a, a large battery of vaccines. You know, recently I said, well, I haven't in a, in a little while. And last time I did that, I was traveling to Canada." Um, Oh, what were you traveling to Canada for? And I told him the story that we've told here. You know, I went to a you know a strong summit. So we're just having casual conversation. And in the midst of that casual conversation, he says two things back to back. He says, number one, you know, I really love Toronto. I've been there a couple of times. Could you go ahead and drop your underwear down to your knees for me? And I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> so <laughs> McKenzie McKellen Michelle is at this point trying her best not to make eye contact. Like, I if. If a human could disappear into a painted corner, she would have done that at that point. So she's she's looking straight down at her uh, at her keyboard, and as I as I say these words, uh, my my pants come down. I said, you know, it was cold there too. As I'm pulling down, <laughs> <laughs> because you know, at this point, you know, I've I've got I've got some sense of ego. You know, and I want to be clear on what's going on here, you know, because shrinkage is a real thing, right? You know, cold air is not the friend to your boys. 
you know, we started off with the baseball reference. I'll continue to baseball reference here. You know, your batting balls don't hit as hard when, when it's cold outside. You're like, they, they don't travel that far. They protect so, themselves. They go back in the yeah. shell. Right, right. <laughs> back in the shell. The tortoise, the horse is out of the barn, and yet the tortoise has gone back into its shell at the same time. Um, oh so he's God. lightly pressed, uh, you know, a light vertical press underneath the uh, underneath the luggage, so to speak, a turn to the right in McKenna McKenzie Michelle's direction, cough, cough, uh, which was good. I had to cough anyway, and I didn't want the COVID stigma, so I've been holding in the cough. So that made it a whole lot better for me. I got to release that call. Uh, and then I got to turn the other way and, and do two more. And um, and and then I got to, I got to pull, pull up the undies. So yeah. I, it was a full frontal medical exam for uh, Michaela McKenzie Michelle. And uh, and I went I went I went full Monty uh, in, in that exam. It was um, and I can't say that it was embarrassing more so than it was awkward. But you know, I tried to approach it from a scientific standpoint. You know, I'm a scientist. You're a scientist, sir. McKelly McKenzie. I don't know what she does, really. Um, so, you know, so he said, okay, you can put your put your clothing back on, Mr. Jones, and and uh, and then uh, he gave me a fist bump. He gave you a fist bump. Oh a fist my bump. god! <laughs> that poor girl. Said, you know well, what? After that, no. After that, she was like, "I'm going back to babysitting." <laughs> She's, she's seen a lot. Yeah. Yeah. She's she's probably she's probably on indeed.com if not LinkedIn right now. Uh she got she probably because I'm sure that you're wearing your fitness Jones training shirt. She probably Googled you is listening to this podcast right now. <laughs> the funny thing is I did tell him the name of the of, of my company. Uh, I didn't have on a fitness Jones training shirt, thank God. Uh but I I don't know, you know, we'll we'll see. But depending on how cold it was and what her perception was, could I get a DM later today? I don't know. We're don't gonna know get that. we're gonna get a review of this <laughs> podcast, and it's gonna be the the person who wrote the review's name is gonna be Michaela Dash McKenzie Dash Michelle, <laughs> and she's gonna be like, "It wasn't even that cold, man. It wasn't even that cold. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, it wasn't that cold. I was actually uh, warm." <laughs> So, so I got a glowing <laughs> review for my physical. You know, that's the, the main. The main point of this story is health, uh, and you know we have to prioritize our health. And I prioritized mine yesterday, and I don't. I I feel like I may have contributed to being slightly detrimental to Michaela McKenzie Michelle's mental health, uh, but my physical health is in <laughs> in tip top condition. So go go get your exam, guy. I, you know what I thought about? I thought about all the countless women that I know that have had experience with the. Uh, with OBGYNs who were males and the professionalism there. I was like, it's not that big, you know, it's, it's medicine rental, you know, take, take your drawers down and, you know, cough twice. So, so that's what it, so that's how my day was yesterday. Keto, Keto, what's going on with you? How- <laughs> Keto, I Keto mean, follow that up. <laughs> yeah, nothing, up. nothing like that, man. I got nothing. Like I'm nothing like, like, just like stumped. Okay. No, I feel like, well, I don't nice. know, like, should I, Yeah. It's this is I'm just I'm get still your, processing that poor girl. <laughs> yeah. get, get your checkups, folks. And and for those out there that don't know what a scribe is, uh, hopefully you've learned a lesson that I wish I had learned before I had my examination. And uh, if, if you are the parent to a young woman <laughs> who says I got a new job, I'm going to be a scribe. Perhaps you'd want to uh, encourage them to 100% make their own choices, but oh, perhaps man. we think their decision. Oh, man. Is what you say. Wow, wow. Um, yeah. So we've got a, apparently we've got a topic. There's more to talk about on the you podcast. You chose the topic today, Ren. Am, oh, Amber sent me the topics, and I said, um, why don't we ask Ren and Carolina if there's anything that they want to talk about. This was approximately uh, 25 minutes ago. <laughs> and um, and here. Here we are. That is and here we are. are. I thought that we were just going to go in go in cold and then call this like a grab bag episode or something. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> grab bag episode. Uh, Such a our, we're just we're just basically like this is the we're giving up episode. <laughs> I was about to say which, which episode we've done 50 already. Which episode was not a, a grab bag episode that we've done so far. Like it's very loosely structured. We've done so, a few that were pretty dialed in. Yeah, pretty. Um, I think I still think that the uh, the two best were the uh, the one uh, the one Catalina 
and and uh, and Amber sort of led on the sexual harassment. I, that, that was a standout episode to me. It's like yeah. it's like a serious. It's like back in the day when I watched Different Strokes, and I don't know if you guys are familiar with Different Strokes, but Different Strokes mm-hmm. was a show where two young black men uh, got adopted by a wealthy white socialite, uh, Mr. Drummond, uh, famous uh, Arnold Drummond and Willis Drummond. Uh, what you talking about, Willis? Um, and uh, yeah, so you remember that phrase? Uh, no, you know, I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm just not oh, whatever, like. whatever, Jonathan. There's there's people in the age range, you know. But in any case, there was one really serious episode about pedophilia on Different Strokes, and that's sort of what our one wow. episode of about yeah. sexual harassment. It's was like, like it's yeah. like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air episode where where, where, where his dad Uncle leaves. Phil, yeah, where his dad leaves, where yeah, his dad yeah. like shows up and then leaves, and Uncle Phil and and Will mm-hmm. are like. It's a good episode. Like how that moment is like that was like that was, that was the a, best episode, right? That was pretty good. How come you don't want me no more, man? That was really good. Did you so, hear did you hear this story about what happened afterwards? Yeah, he was like, That's how you no. that's how you act. Yeah, when, he's uh, yeah. so he's giving him a hug, and as yeah. he lets go, the minute that they turn off the cameras, he's still holding him and he's like, This is how you F and act. That's right, that's right. That's what James Avery said to Will Smith. So in any case, so what are we are we doing the USP thing? We're talking about the USP in the in your story? Who well, you picked it, Amber? What was it? What was the What was the title? Amber says yes. the The official title is "Why Your Story Is Crucial to Building Your Online Business." Oh man, that's that's good. That's mm-hmm. that's pretty good. good. I'm so that. confused though. Amber's wearing sleeves and Carolina's not. I know it's 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 uh it's like Twilight Zone. It's, it's like gray. Twilight Zone. I don't know but, what to do. But both of them, hey, Keto just flexed. But both of them have just fabulous. Flexed. That was fabulous impressive. hair though. Like. You guys have the best hair on the show. That's why I always wear a hat. I'm intimidated by your, uh, by all of your hair. It's just <laughs> great hair on the podcast. So your story, right? Um, I talk to OTA students about this all the time. And and I'm sure a lot of you have had conversations with a lot of different coaches over the course of time about what your story is. And, and I use this analogy a lot because I like the Olympics. I don't know if you guys are Olympics fans here. I like Jonathan, do you watch the Olympics? Are you an Olympics fan at all? I have been. I I don't really watch the Olympics that much. Um, right. But I, I studied it. Olympic history in university. Really? Okay. I did I did a year course okay. where I studied Olympic history and it was fascinating. Awesome. Yeah, my final project was on the nineteen thirty six, was on the Berlin Olympics, nineteen thirty six. Oh, Jesse Owens. The political ramifications of that. It was really yeah. interesting. Um, so, so I know a fair bit about the Olympics from now. Right, like, I don't right. really know, like, I, 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 all the and, geopolitical stuff. And, and Keto, Keto, you're all in, though. Like, you're all in on the Olympics. I you am all yeah. in precisely because of the stories, the underdogs, the people yeah. who were never meant to make right. it, and now they're winning gold. That I live for that. Yes. <laughs> and Keto, that's my exact point. Thank you for that beautiful segue. This is what I tell OTA students in terms of their story, right? Because they think that. The, we have the erroneous assumption that our credentials are going to make people hire us. You're going to say, mm-hmm. I'm a certified trader. And people are going to say, oh, I need you. Uh, or you're going to say, I have three credentials, certified trainer, and I'm a nutrition coach, and I'm a corrective exercise specialist. And people, people will fall to your feet to hire you because you're incredible credentials. I can tell you guys out there, people have no freaking clue what any of that means out there that are hiring. They, they don't, you can say, mm-hmm. coach, it's all the same to them. Like, with, you know, I've stopped long ago putting the letters behind my name, you know, CPC, blah, 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 because people don't know what it means. They don't know what that means. The only person that knows what that means is other coaches and coaches may hire you. That's true. But they're not typically not going to be your 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 base market. So if you look at someone like uh, S- Simone Biles, right, this crazy Olympian, she's basically a power ranger. She's a uh, young African-American gymnast. She's got moves named after her. Because nobody else has ever done them before. It doesn't even make mm-hmm. sense how it doesn't even make sense. Does, like doesn't it, make like sense. It's, yeah. it's inhuman. The things that she does in the middle of the air to land on her feet, they just they don't make sense. Yeah. Uh, but even at that level of excellence, and when you look at the Olympics, so you're looking at the top what one percent of the world, right? These people train for four years for this moment and nothing else. Uh, like the drama couldn't be any higher than that, right? Mm-hmm. Like the, the stakes can't be any higher. I get knots in my stomach watching it. And even in that case, your television programming knows that they still have to tell the story about these people. Because even at that level of excellence, you will not get emotionally involved unless you know a little bit about them. You, you know, that Simone Biles was adopted, right? 
uh, and her parents, her adoptive parents never pushed her into gymnastics, which she took a liking to it and they supported her. And uh, like, you need to know that. Sean White, who's one of my favorite uh, winter Olympians, a uh, young kid, mm-hmm. red, bright red hair, snowboarder. I think he went down in like 2012 or something. Like he crashed during one Olympics, had a horrible Olympics. Uh, and knowing that story, and they profiled that story before the Olympics so that he came back and won gold again. Like knowing that story means something. Lindsey Vaughn, the downhill skier. She has some type of issue that she went through. I think she was dating Tiger Woods for a while, which may be issue enough in itself. Um, but uh, <laughs> we know we need those. Like the, the network knows you need that story to become invested in the Olympics. And these are the best people in the world at what they do. And I'm sure you're a fine coach out there if you're listening. But you may not be the top 1% of coaches uh, to think that just your credentials is what's going to get across to your potential market that you're the person that they should hire. People want to know that story. Um, We've talked about Kettle's story here before, talked a little bit about Jonathan's. Most of them are travel stories, but they're still his story. You know, it gets you invested. So one thing that I encourage OTA students to do is to share their story. It's one of the first conversations I have with them on the backside of the USP. Uh, I want to know the story because I want to see what the authenticity with the USP is in Kettle's case. You know, Keto, it, would you mind sharing a, a little bit about sort of how you transitioned to become a, a coach in this industry? Like, where, where did you come from? We know that you were using the magic of your sweet, sweet words at the call center, uh, uh, but eventually you became a coach. Like, wh- what was that transition like for you? What's, what's your come up? You came up, son. What's, <laughs> yeah. what's your come up oh, story? I came up. Oh, I came up. So I'm, I'm an immigrant. I immigrated from Mexico to Canada. And so uh, I've always had like a thing for athletics. And when I decided to pursue it as a, as, as my work, it involved uh, getting certified and then researching like the, the good, you know, institutions with whom I would get my certifications and then, you know, mm-hmm. affording the stuff because when you are, when you haven't worked yet and you're broke as all heck, that's an issue on its own. So then that was a struggle. And then everything was, all of my studies and my preparation up until this point has been in my second language. So there's barriers there that a lot of people maybe don't face because that's not their situation. And then also for me, it was, uh, you know, being a wife and being a mom and then having two additional little ones and then making it all fit. That is all part of my mm-hmm. story. It's like the struggle of the making things happen, of putting determination, of putting kids to bed, and then staying up for hours into the night studying and finishing exams and everything that needed to get done until you're able to put into work all that, that you've learned. And honestly, what powered me through is just like by sheer, by sheer energy of my mere enthusiasm. Because that's one thing about me. I get really excited about stuff and I want to tell all the people in the world and I want everybody to enjoy. And so that's part of my story. It's like this same enthusiasm. Then, you know, you you get to work with that enthusiasm when you hire me. And a lot of my clients really want that in their life because they don't they don't necessarily are surrounded by people who are super like positive and energetic and just like getting right. stuff done like they like they like. So it all matters. Like your personality, everything matters. Ja- now, Jonathan, you you know you know Keto, you vet. Uh, can can you corroborate that? So is she, is she telling you the truth about who she is? is? Is this accurate, or did she just make this up? No, it's accurate. It's accurate. It's accurate. Okay. So <laughs> despite all the crap we give her on this podcast, she's a pretty impressive person. <laughs> she's she's a fairly impressive individual. <laughs> Um, so, but, don't so tell her I ever said that and I'll never admit it again. But right, it's true. Right. Yeah, but, well, it's been recorded now, Jonathan, so you can't disavow it. We'll just, we'll just play it back over and over again. That, that's so, the quote card, Amber, that's the quote card for this the, episode. Kara's very impressive. Yeah. <laughs> what ha- guys, I just, I just actually just blacked out for like the last three minutes. <laughs> I don't remember anything I said. <laughs> that is, what that happened? Is, He's giving himself a stroke by admitting that Caroline is impressive. It's gone against all all of his all of his uh, foundational beliefs. All his core tenets have been wiped away. So, so Keto, deferring back to your story now. Now let's piggyback that on your USP. Who do you work with? I work with women who are very driven and very results oriented, and who have a lot of drive behind wanting to get stuff done. Big energy. Hey, Jonathan Goodman here. This podcast is made possible thanks to people like you. 
Here's a quick word from our sponsors. Are you still trying to pick your online training software? If so, let me make this easy for you. Go with PT Distinction. It's truly the best, and I'm not just saying that because they're our sponsor. We actually use PT Distinction for our own online fitness business, online trainer coaching, and we're really happy with it. From onboarding to programming to client communication, PT Distinction has everything you need to run your online fitness business smoothly, and it's super simple to use. Now, normally they offer a free 30-day trial, but as a listener of the Online Trainer Show, you get a free 60-day trial, so you can make sure you love them before spending a dime. If you want to deliver first-class service to your clients while reclaiming your time, then visit onlinetrainer.com slash PTD to sign up for your free 60-day trial today. If you're a fitness and nutrition coach that's looking to master online coaching so that you can help more people, make more money, and have more freedom, then the Online Trainer Academy can help. OTA gives you the framework, knowledge, and support to have predictable success with your online coaching business. From marketing to business development to how to assess and motivate your clients online, it is constantly updated and refreshed to keep up with a dynamic market. Not only that, OTA is proven. In seven years, we've helped over 30,000 coaches in 87 countries go online. Truth is, we know what works, so you can get right to the success part. And in case you're busy working a full-time job or you're a full-time parent, know that you can go at your own pace. There's no deadlines to complete OTA and you have lifetime access. That said, if you are ready to make a rapid change and finish the course in the next 8 to 12 weeks, you can expect to invest 3 to 5 hours each week on the program. And here's the best part. If you join today, you will make an extra $1,000 a month in 90 days or I'll give you your money back. So if you're ready to build the fitness business you want and make the money you deserve, go to onlinetrainer.com slash academy to enroll today. And I hope to see you in there. So you guys out there listening, you can see how there's authenticity in her USP through, through through sort of the doorway of her story, right? Like you get a lot further in, in the online space in particular. Number one, when you're, when you have an, when, well, everybody has an authentic story. You don't have to find an authentic story. Number one, when you're authentic about your story to the, to the extent that you feel comfortable sharing it, you know, we don't try to force anybody into telling all their business. You know, if you've dropped trowel in front of Mackenzie, Michaela, Michelle in an office visit, you don't have to tell the story. I prefer to tell it, uh, but it's authentic. So, but, but, but second, second to that is your USP connects a lot better when there's some semblance of you in it and, and Jonathan, you know, and I'm sure you can speak eloquently to this. I'll get coaches in the OTA coaching calls who tell us, Oh, what, tell me what's your USP. Oh, well, I work with um, um, guys who, um, who have um, uh, three or four kids and they live a corporate lifestyle and blah, blah, blah. Oh, so, so tell me your story. Yeah. I was a collegiate wrestler. Uh, and I love grappling, you know, I never had kids, uh, you know, I just really don't like yeah. kids that much. I'm like, dude, here's where your struggle is. You're so disconnected between the authenticity of your story and the USP that you're trying to make up. It's so contrived. Uh, it's no wonder why you can't attract anybody because there's nothing about you that signals to this, to this target demographic. Um, you know, have you have you seen that play out, Jonathan, in in terms of what coaches think they should make create versus what they actually are? Because people want to create a one percent uniqueness factor that already exists, right? Right. I mean, um, basically everything already exists. The question is whether anybody's right. done it justice. What what I find a lot of people try to do is they try to say what they think is the right thing. Right. You know, they're like, oh, well, where is the opportunity already, like in my own head, which may or may not be the reality. But the, the, the truth is you really don't need many clients. How many times have we repeated this? Like you need 30 clients at 200 bucks a month to make $72,000 a year. Like That's you don't good. need many bodies. And so, you know, this idea of like, oh, I'm going to go here because it's a good market is, is the wrong thinking. I mean, unless, unless you are the type of person who really wants to build something big, right. like way beyond yourself, like, like a company with multiple employees, potentially building some software component or a product component. But I mean, I'm talking like multi, multi, multi million dollar big, right? Right. Um, maybe then you can, I would still probably say start on the fringes, you know, right. just because it's the easiest way to start and then work your way work your way in but 
what what we found, I mean, Amber can talk more to this because we love making Amber talk on this podcast. Right. And she's so excited. She's so excited. Uh, you know, I, I saw her nodding when I said it, so I'd love to hear her because she, you know, she interacts with, with our online trainer academy students much more day to day than I do. Is this idea that people feel like they have to have a, a, a market that is a big market or like they feel like they have to say they're they have to tell a story that's not true to them because it's more marketable. Right. If that makes sense. Um, Amber, you could probably say that better than I can though. If you agree, I mean, if you don't agree, tell me. Speak on it. It'd be better. It'd be more entertaining if you don't agree. Actually, actually, John, I think you're completely wrong and I'm leaving (laughs) and I'm starting my own company. Um, I have no to do that even if I could think of it fast enough. Um, yeah, I mean, I think we're so focused on on doing the quote unquote right thing that we miss the right thing for us. Um, right. And we tend to way complicate things. Like it, it shouldn't be that hard, that hard. We make it way harder than it needs to be. And instead of running with with what's true to us, we tend to, like you said earlier, run like create this this story that we don't resonate with because it feels like that should be the right answer. Yeah, absolutely. It, and and what we what we mistake is what we don't understand is that our story is interesting to other people. It's just not interesting to us a lot of times. Now, there are some exceptions. Some people have wildly interesting stories. I mean, you know, you you couldn't you couldn't buy a better story than that. Uh, but but for instance, I had a, a guy that I coached, and I'll just call him out, Alex Pfeiffer. Awesome, awesome guy. He's doing great in OTA. Uh, should be doing OTA level two at some point, I think. Shout out to you, Alex. He's killing it. Awesome, awesome kid. But but this guy makes his own craft beer at home, and he said, "Well, I don't really want to talk about that because you know it'll it'll look odd for a trainer to make craft beer at home." And I'm like, "Bro, like, mm-hmm. are Yo, you even here?" Incredible. <laughs> Are you even yeah, hearing what you he's a, he's a model for Under Armour for God's sakes? Uh, makes his own craft beer. And he's like, well, I don't really feel comfortable talking about the cab. I was like, dude, that's first of all. Do you know how many people drink beer, specifically yes. craft beer? And you yep. in your kitchen, like you don't have a facility. Like you, you literally home craft craft beer, and you don't think that's unique. Um, and we worked on that a bit over the course of several OTA coaching calls, because here again, what's, what, what we do seems so mundane and normal to us. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. We, can't, we don't view it as being special. And a lot of this comes in, in the context of comparison, right? Well, my story is not as blank as blanks is. Um, but most of the time it's phenomenal to the other people around us. And we try to, what I see happen is people try to create their 1% unique disfactor without realizing that you were, you were born with it. Like there's yeah. literally nobody like you. Well, and so here's the thing. Anywhere. So I, I did a call for, I mean, when's this going to go live? Two weeks? Yeah. So this promotion will already happen. So I can talk about it. So we're, we're, we're bundling. I think you guys know we're bundling together Precision Nutrition Level 1 and, and the Online Trainer Academy for like Black Friday, Cyber Monday. and selling nice. both together. Mm-hmm. So we're creating some content together with both companies and talking to people who have done both certifications and stuff like that. And so I did, um, we, we recorded like a content piece that's going to be used a couple of different ways. And it was myself and um, Robin from PN basically moderated an interview with myself and Kate from Precision mm-hmm. Nutrition. It was awesome. And, uh, and we spoke about this. And Kate actually, in this piece of content, spoke about like this idea of how to identify what makes you unique. And it was really brilliant. She's like, oh, you know, well, I... Um, yeah, like I'm, I'm, I'm a single mom and I love the outdoors and I love going hiking and I've had to move and I built my own business. And she, she listed off like, like eight or nine different things. Mm-hmm. You know, some of them were more generic, like I'm a single mom and other ones were like really specific into her interests. Like I make craft beer in my kitchen. Right. And the conversation basically went, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about it because I think it was, it, it was really important. Basically, I don't know, and you don't know which one of those things is going to be appealing. Right. Mm-hmm. I don't know which one of those things is best going to constitute the story that you tell that has that like 
weird, unpredictable combination that you could never, you could never anticipate what it is. You could never right. uh, 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 create it of like the people you're connected to, the kind of general feeling going on in the world, how you look, how you write, all of these things mesh together in ways that you can't measure, right? Mm -hmm. And that's, and you eventually will hit this like sweet spot of, well, for some reason that probably nobody really knows, one aspect of something about you is probably going to connect and hit hard. Right. And you don't know what that is. Right. And so the job is, and I use the extremely eloquent example on this very professional call with precision nutrition <laughs> of um, flinging poop against the wall. <laughs> and uh, very, now, very well said, Jonathan. Amber, Amber just gave me a. <sighs> She's and not so what, what I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> just so disappointed in you right now. I wanted to give I wanted to give the um, listeners and watchers of that piece of content from other companies and that I wanted to give them the online trader show experience. You know, right, right. And, <laughs> well done. You you certainly did that, Jonathan. Certainly did. And so what I basically said is like all of these things. Picture yourself as just like a monkey flinging poop against the wall. Like you don't know what is going to stick. Right? Fling it all. Tell stories about all of these things. So the point of your story is that the monkey should fling all of the shit. Is that, is, am I understanding correctly? I just want to make sure I'm on track. Yeah, no, here. you follow. Yeah, you're on, you're on Okay, track. okay. Yeah, yeah. Is it a hard, was it a hard example to follow? No, no, I, I think I got it. Was, it was difficult at first, but now I think after after further thought, uh, I can visualize uh, a live monkey flinging all the shit available at a wall. Thank you, John. I mean, I guess like I, we could tell some travel stories yes. about living with monkeys right. in my backyard. Um, they really do throw their poo. That's, but that twelfth book is on the way, guys. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the idea, people who are way less mature than I am, obviously. <laughs> obviously, it's us. Obviously, is when something sticks, you keep flinging that poop. You keep right. you keep telling that story, right? You have no idea what it's going to be. Like, what are all of the things about you? Tell stories about all of them. Talk about all of them. And then when something seems to hit, you keep hammering that. Mm-hmm. Right, you keep talking about that thing. You keep spreading that message over and over. How many times has Gary Vaynerchuk told you to hustle? Right, right. Oh, do you Pena. think he's? Do you think he set out and said my message is going to be hustle? No, he flung a lot of poop for a lot right. of years, right. and the idea of hustle hit, and now he repeats it ninety-seven times a day on different platforms, at least, at because least. that's his thing. Right. Mm -hmm. He knows what attracts the type of people that he wants to attract and what he's become known for. That's that's the idea. That's how you figure out what content to create. And it's very hard to know what that is in advance, because, like I said, it's some like almost magical combination of, like I said, really down to like how you sound, how you look, who you're connected to, and also just mm -hmm. like general feeling in the air that like you can't you can't know these things there's too right. many confounding factors of them um but you can certainly experiment and the most important thing about experimentation is recognizing when you're on to something right and continuing on there and going deeper and deeper there versus like not recognizing it and continuing to do more stuff about more different things right right it it you make a great point um, because if you try to filter out the authenticity to, to try, to try to like aim it, you're probably going to miss. Uh, and, in, and the, the other analogy that I use a lot of times with OTA students is because, you know, because I'm an expert at this, because I, I did one fitness competition where I placed 16th out, I think, out of, I think 20 people. So obviously, <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, Keto. Keto, <laughs> Keto gave me some acknowledgement there. I, I appreciate you, Keto. You're, you're such a nurturer. Um, I think so, we're going to need pictures for the show notes. Yeah, I've, I've yeah. got I've got photos of of my my very uh, ill fitting 
uh, not the shorts I had on at the doctor's office, but a, a different, it was board <laughs> shorts. Um, those, those shorts are now only reserved for McKenzie, Michaela, Michelle. <laughs> However, uh, it's, it's like what you see people go through in the fitness competition industry. I mean, the posing competition, the, uh, when you get on stage, you pose down. There's sort of two different ways that people go about it. Number one is people will survey the judges after they lose. You know, they go to the judges. Uh, you know, what what do you guys see in my physique that I could that I could do better? What? Well, if you had more width in your shoulders and a little bit narrower at the waist and had a greater quad sweep, it really create that sort of hourglass effect. You know, so work on that. Work on adding size to your shoulders. Work on adding, adding size to the quads, and then you go do that. And you go to your next competition a year later, a year and a half, and you lose again. And you ask the judges again, hey, well, you know, what can I do? Well, if you had, a, if you feel a little bit more narrow in the shoulders and a little bit less quad sweep and a little bit thicker in it, so you go to the next one. And every competition, you're chasing around everybody else's idea of what your body should be like. So you never hit with anybody versus the people that, and you've seen these people on the internet that say things like, I'm just going to bring my best body to the competition. Those are the people that hit because invariably you're going to run into a set of judges who like what you present. And if what you present is relatively constant, you'll probably hit more than one time. You know, you'll 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 win more than one competition as opposed to always sort of um, the tail wagging the dog. Right. You you're always looking, you know, what should I? It, well, I, I went shirtless last week, you know, to get some to get some viewership like the other guy, that guy who has 50 billion people following him. He goes shirtless. So I'm going to try that. Uh, that didn't work last week. So this week I'm going to do infographics. I'm going to do the infographics this week, like Carter Good, because he's a, well, that didn't work. So next week I'm going to windmill some kids like Molly, you know, I'm, I'm going to do some windmills with some kids because that, and you're always changing instead of just being yourself. I promise you, man, if, if you, if you just allow, if you allow space to be your most authentic self, tell your most authentic story, you give people enough frequency with that to gravitate towards it. They realize that you're their person and they start to bring other people into your sort of sphere of influence. The worst thing you can do is try to come up with some contrived story or even worse than that, avoid your real story to, tr to try to, as Amber said, to try to force something to happen that doesn't happen. Back to Jonathan's point, you don't know what the combination is, man. Like you don't know what the sum of the things are about you that just two or three of them just combine in a way that seems so refreshingly unique to people, you know, back to the Gary V point, when he was dropping F-bombs all over the internet, I'm sure there were lots of people up front that said, I would never do business with this guy. He's some type of an asshat until he kept doing it and kept doing it. And then all the people that love it, they started following and they started, they started mimicking him. You know, it's not hard to be yourself. Uh, it's hard to trust that your authentic self is enough. And that that's so where you have to be in the quote code. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. that was so close to being the quote code. Man. It, it, it's, almost... it's, it's what, what did I, where did I go? Let's wrong? try it again. Not... It's not, it's not how it being yourself, but then it's... we got to follow it up with some super snappy wise saying. Yeah. Okay. So it's not hard being yourself. It's hard trusting who you actually are. Uh, Bam. And being able, being able to, to, to allow that person to peek through. That's where that's where most of you that I talk to are having the issue. You just don't you don't trust your own personhood as if you're constantly comparing it to something else. If you could do that, you'd attract more people um, and your USP, your unique selling proposition would become it would come through a lot more naturally. And you'd actually resonate with the people that might hire you. You know, I work with moms over 30. I'm not a wrap it up. B. I work with moms over 30. Yeah, I'm, I'm way over 30, but I'm not a mom. I don't have any children at all. Uh, but the authenticity of my story dealing with the uh, extended illness of and subsequent loss of my mother due to health related concerns, that's where the authenticity comes from me. Because when you're coaching people on person, and I've heard Jonathan say this more than once, you don't realize that your USP is probably proximity. Geography is your USP. You don't coach everybody. You coach everybody within a blank mile radius of where your studio is. That's what your USP is. I coach everybody who wants to get in shape who lives within blank mile radius of where I coach. And when you get online, the first thing you lose is proximity, right? It's everybody's the same distance away, a click. Everybody's a click away. Um, and that you just imagine every single coach in the world in your facility, all of them, say there's 500,000 coaches in the world. They're all in your facility. They've all got a white t-shirt on that says coach. 
there's, <laughs> there's no way for anybody to pick one out other than to go around and say, excuse me, what are your rates? Excuse me, what are your rates? Oh, you're less than him. Let me jot that down. Excuse me, what are your rates? But if you're one of the coaches in there and I walk in and your T-shirt says, I coach guys who are under 5'8", uh, who are black from the South, you know, who have tiny calves that want to play basketball on the weekends and impress their friends. Ah, man, love your T-shirt. Are you, are, you, are you taking on any clients? I don't care about the rates at that point. Um, I just don't care about it. So the authenticity of your story allows you to differentiate in a market where everybody's right there together, hireable. Everybody's available to everybody at one yeah. point. So you got to differentiate. And that's that's all I got for you today. Any Anything to add? Any Anybody got a, any? All right, sweet. All right. A very important Everyone's reminder that in this episode, Jonathan called me impressive. That's right. That's we, <laughs> Let's bring everything back to that. Yeah. yeah Jonathan, you black. You blacked out a little bit, Jonathan, uh, but that's that's an important point, Keto. Bring it, bring it back to that. And make sure that uh, timestamp is in the show notes, uh, so people, you know, timestamp zero eight three five. Jonathan says Kettleine is impressive. The, the listeners will want to go right to that. They'll probably skip the whole episode after that. Um, what's, what's, what's again? We solved all your problems here in fifty minutes or less on the online training show. Show notes, uh, online training.com slash podcast. Uh, you can go there and see the show notes or whatever else you want. Let's look at everything. Uh, you, you I'll have see, you could see wins. Yeah, I'm, I'm, in, I'm in my skivvies. Um, I'm not in my skivvies, <laughs> but I do have footage from the doctor's office visit. If someone wants to gawk at me that way, uh, and we'll we'll see you next time on the on the online trainer show. And I guess it's time for the jingle. Uh, so. my jingle was out yesterday. Um, <laughs> Happy Tuesday. <laughs> You're welcome. Jingle, jingle. This is the online trainer show. Trainer show. Trainer show. This is the online trainer show. We shouldn't have a podcast. <laughs>